Good morning. I got my own glasses this morning, so I'm going to be able to see. <laughs> hey, I want to thank the band. Uh, many of you need to keep Nick in your prayers. He's kind of been under the weather a little bit and not feeling very well, but his wife said he's on his way back up, so uh, thank you for the prayers, and please keep him in your prayers. We appreciate uh, Terry stepping in here and pulling things together and getting us some music this morning. We really appreciate that. And Congratulations on your marriage. We good thing. Also want to thank John for his music this morning. He put a little pressure on me though. He uh, he said he was here three years ago, and I did a message that affected him and his family. And I thought, man, if that's three years ago, what am I going to do today? So, <laughs> oh no, that's a good thing. Thank you again, and thank you for your ministry. We appreciate that. Well, we had a. Uh, Interesting night last night. We had a good time with the uh, moms and daughters here at the church. It was a great event. And uh, you know what? Not only was it about the moms and the daughters, it was the guys. You know, it was really good to all the guys that served and they helped out. And, you know, we all got yoked together, basically, pulling in the same direction to get this done, to serving these ladies. And, and it, it felt good. Everything flowed really, really good. It was... Uh, um, we even had some young boys and teenage boys that helped, which was really good to see. And once again, we all got yoked together, pulling in the same direction, and it worked really good. In fact, when it was over at 8 o'clock, we not only uh, cleaned up, got all the tables cleaned up and put up and everything, but mopped this floor and out in the children's church and put all the chairs back, and we were out of here at 930. Now, that's pulling together, isn't it? I mean, that is a really... Good job when you can do it and you have enough people doing it. So I want to thank those guys for that. You know, I'm using these words this morning, and you're going to catch on to that, but yoke together. That's a, that's a good thing there because that's what it takes to do something really, really well. It's when you come together, you have to be yoked together. You, you have to be pulling in the same direction. Everybody on board going the same way. And that's, that's uh, real critical in our lives. There's a story about a little carpenter shop out in Nazareth with a sign over the door that reads, The best yokes are here. And if you, if you read into the story of what it is, they're referring to Joseph's little carpenter shop that he had there in Nazareth. And they made all kinds of things out of wood. You know, of course, furniture and wheels for wagons and they did repair of things, and, of course, they made yokes for pulling by oxen or horse or whatever. And uh, not only did they build things, they repaired things. They, would repair, they could repair just about anything that had to do with wood. And this is where Jesus learned that trade. It's... Um, just as it was in the shop then, basically, where they brought in things, people brought in things from time to time to be mended. Just as it was then, people would bring things there to be mended then. You can take things to Jesus right now to be mended. Exactly the same thing applies today. That's never changed. The Lord says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Exactly. Jesus waits for you. Bring it to him to mend. Why is it that we always think that other people's yokes are easier to carry than our own? Basically saying there, it's the same thing if you look at it this way. Why is it that your cross is always heavier to carry than someone else's? Because we look at it that way sometimes. We think our cross is so much heavier 
than everybody else's. When truly, sometimes our cross is really easier to carry than the other person's. That's why the Lord says to you, take my yoke upon you. For my burden is light. My burden is light. Many farmers that back in the day, some of you may know now, you know, that using mules or using oxen or using horses, whatever you use to pull a plow or to pull a wagon or anything that they were going to pull a load with, those farmers understand how the yoke works. That for a yoke to work properly, the animals you use have to be of equal strength and equal height. Because if you get one shorter than the other or you get one weaker than the other, they become unequally yoked and one will wind up pulling the whole load, basically. Or they'll wind up pulling in opposite directions because one's stronger than the other. That's why they refer to the yoke of people being equally yoked to one another. When animals are used in this way, and if you understand, there were so many different kinds of yokes, but the most popular were the neck yoke, which was a basically a wooden type yoke that went across the neck and kept the animals yoked together that way. And then they had, of course, a head yoke that slid over the head. And when those didn't fit right, when the animals weren't yoked together right, then it would cause that yoke to rub or chafe the neck, or it would cause a lot of discomfort for one of the animals. Maybe even both usually does. So it was very, very important that they yoked the animals equally, that it didn't get lopsided. Rather, you didn't put a donkey with an ox because that didn't work. So that's why they use this metaphor in the Bible because just as animals need to be evenly yoked, so do we. So do we. One example would be in marriage. is a really good example. If you are a Christian and you are married to a non-Christian, then there's going to be some discomfort in that marriage. You're not always going to see eye to eye. Usually in those cases, the wife is showing up to church and the husband's still at home. It gets unequal and it gets uncomfortable, especially when one is seeing the progress of the family or the raising of the family in one direction and the other one sees it entirely different in marriage. In marriage, if it goes against God's will and you are a Christian, something's going against God's will, you're going to stand up for that if you are a true follower of God. And that other person may think, well, we can let that slide. That's no big deal. Well, that makes it really uncomfortable in marriage. In business, it's the same way. If you take on a business partner and you are a truly a Christian, that you're walking in God's word, and you take on a business partner that's not, you're going to want to do things right. And you're going to want to do them above board. Where that partner may just do things a little bit shady and maybe not do it all above board. That's going to make it very uncomfortable for you to stay in business with a partner like that. So it's not good to be unequally yoked that way. And any time in life when a Christian yokes their self to a non-Christian or a non-believer, there's going to be continual friction and there's going to be some discomfort there. Now, before you take this the wrong way, let's make sure we get through the whole sermon. Don't start throwing tomatoes and rocks at me yet. Many of you have been, or maybe still are today, yoked to friends that you had before you became a Christian. And those, those particular friends, you're around them quite often even though they are unbelievers. And once you became a Christian, a lot of those friends started to slide away from you, getting a little bit further away from you. You know, they, they just, they, 
what happened there actually is they became uncomfortable around you, not you around them. So the change started. The Holy Spirit took over and you started a change in your heart. And you started to see things. And you may even have mentioned if you've got this friend that's just using profanity all the time around you. And he's been doing that forever. But all at once, that kind of bothers you a little bit. It makes you uncomfortable. And you start mentioning it to them. And what do they do? They look at you like, are you crazy or something? And then the next thing you know, they start to slide away from you. Because you have that discomfort because you're yoked with someone that's not following God's word in the way you are. And that happens regularly with a bunch of us. But once that Holy Spirit starts to change in you, if you're truly a follower of God, if truly the Holy Spirit got a hold of you, what they're seeing, they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with that because they're not used to you being that way. They're not used to you being that way at all. And the thing is, you are a walking testimony to them. For them to pull away from you is understandable. Understandable at all. I said this before. You know, I used to, man, I, I was real uncomfortable when a group got together and they would talk about God. I was very uncomfortable with that. Stand around there a few minutes, even some of my friends, and then I'd start to slide off. I'd start to go find something else to do while they discuss their little Bible thing and God and all that. And today I'd run off a Jehovah Witness talking about God. <laughs> Didn't that change? Didn't that change? And every one of you have a story that someone knows, say, man, I can't believe that guy right there is a preacher today. I can't believe that guy is going to church. I can't believe the changes that have come upon him. So when you're yoked with someone that is a non-believer, it will get uncomfortable. And it can get uncomfortable for the Christian too because you really want to do the right things. You really want to say the right things to them. But you don't, you know, you've been friends forever and you don't just want to run them off. One of the things that's happened there though, God has made you bigger and stronger. So you can't be yoked to somebody weak anymore. That's what's going on there. So you're pulling in different directions and you're the stronger one in your faith. You're the stronger one. You've gotten bigger and stronger in your faith and you're pulling this way and they're still going this way. So God's used that to strengthen you. Your faith grew stronger while theirs remained the same or remained weak. So you're no longer yoked equally. Amen? 2 Corinthians, let's go there. 2 Corinthians uh, verse 6, begin at verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, begin at verse 14. It says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do, the, what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Bill? Or what does a believer have in common with a non-believer? Rather, this is saying, don't be yoked together with unbelievers. Now, here's the part that you're sitting here saying, now wait a minute. This is basically telling me I need to get rid of all my friends. That's not what that means at, at all. This verse can be wrongly used in many different ways to end friendships where one person is a Christian and the other isn't. It can be wrongly used. And if you believe it that way, then that's not what the, what the Scripture is saying at all. This piece of Scripture has been used by Christian communities and by churches where no one can have a friend outside the church. It's used that way. That's not what it says. Basically, some Christian communities and some churches say, no one does anything, says anything, goes anywhere without the agreement of the church. Without the agreement of the church. And just in case other churches have people 
who are not Christians at that time, then we can't have any association with that church at all. Rather, you're committed to this church, and what we say goes. Don't do anything without getting your okay with us. The Bible doesn't say that. And that's not what Paul would be saying at all, here at all. That's not what this is about. So what is Paul saying right here in this scripture? Well, basically, let's just go to De- Deuteronomy. That'll kind of explain a little bit. Deuteronomy 22, chapter 22, beginning at verse 9. Deuteronomy 22, beginning at verse 9. It says, do not plant two kinds of seeds in your vineyard. If you do, not only the crops you plant, but also the fruit of the vineyard will be defiled. Do not plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. And do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. Okay, there are some things that don't go together. Aluminum foil and a microwave don't work very good. Right? That just pickles and ice cream. I ain't got that one yet. But that, that really don't match together good with me. There are things that just don't go together. And that's, that's basically what we're reading here. But it's, this, this was simply set up. These rules were given as a reminder to the people. In Corinth, it was a reminder that, that it wasn't just about the rule. Some people focused strictly on the rule, but it, it, it wasn't just about the rule. It was a reminder that don't mix worships. Don't mix, mix worships. If, if you are a believer in God and you are a Christian follower, then don't go worshiping small gods. Worship the one and only God. And that's what this was. This was a reminder. So these, these folks wouldn't, they were starting to lean that way. They were starting to focus on that a little bit. And they, this was just a reminder saying, hey, these rules are set in place as a reminder that you don't mix worship with any other foreign god. Basically how that comes down. So the Bible, even though it says that, and people take that scripture out of context, don't yoke yourself to an unbeliever, means more or less, don't, remember the rules. Even though they're an unbeliever, and this is the best way to look at it, don't let them pull you on your, their side. You pull them on your side, right? So it's pretty simple. That's basically what they're saying here. Paul didn't say, end all relationships with unbelievers. He didn't say that at all. And he, and and. That's not what you're supposed to do anyway. The Bible's really clear on that. If you do that, if you, if, if, even if a church decides or a Christian community decides that we're going to end all contact with anybody that's an unbeliever, that might not be a Christian, in the church, whatever, outside the church, if we end all that, then we've failed at what God calls to, called us to do. And that's to make disciples. That's to reach outside these church walls and find the lost. So if we can't get out there and associate with an unbeliever, how are we going to present Christ to them? It, it, it doesn't make sense. It goes against strictly what the Bible says. Now, once again, if you rub elbows pretty well, if you yoke yourself to someone, you can start to take on their tendencies. The whole concept is, Allow them to see Jesus through you and they take on your tendencies. Amen? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 9. We're going to back up what we just said. It says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral are the greedy and the swindlers and the idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave the world. So basically, he's not telling you to just disregard the whole world and stay in here in these little walls and stay away from anyone that might not be a Christian or might not be a believer. So what he's telling us here is if you did that, you would just have to withdraw from the world altogether. You couldn't basically hardly talk to anybody anymore to figure out what to do. 
But God's mission is the world. It's not right here. It is the whole world. So we can't withdraw from the world. And in those associations, once again, if you're going to be associated, not necessarily yoked, because at one time you were yoked together with them, and they're still really good friends, and some of your family members, I got family members that slid out there pretty good away from me. I'm okay with that. But I'm not going to stay away from them. I'm going to keep spoon feeding them a little bit every time I get around them. (laughs) And it works. In our Bass Club ministry, we're not looking for those people that are Christians. We're not looking for those people that go to church every Sunday. We're looking for those that don't. We want to invite them into an area of comfort where we can reach them. John here shared with me a really good thing that they're doing. They're going to a restaurant down in town, Maybank, down near the area he lives. And they're going in the restaurant and they're playing country gospel music. And people come because they love the restaurant. And people come because they love the country or the western music. And John and them have come to a place where they're spoon feeding people and they don't even know they're getting it. It's like putting that stuff on that food that makes you eat more. You know what I'm saying? Our son used to tell us he loved ponchos. He loved to go and raise the flag at ponchos, right? And he would tell us when we'd go in there to eat, he goes, man, when you get full, just keep on eating. I said, what's wrong with you, boy? He said, just keep on eating because they put stuff on the food to make you think you're full. Because it's, it's, it, it's all you can eat. That's what they're doing. They're putting some flavor on the food that's drawing them in. The thing only set to 140. They're having to turn people away because the fire marshal won't let any more in there. Now, are they reaching people? He shared with me that there was a lady that came to him and said her husband never went to church. Never went to church. But he loved to eat. And he loved country music. And for the first time, he's been to church, what, three times now? My goodness. That's, that's getting out there. That's what God wants us to do. That's exactly how cowboy church works. The Western heritage culture was designed to reach outside these walls, to reach people that don't want any part of church. I'm not the guy that's going to shove any kind of stuff down your throat anyway. Because that's not what we're supposed to do. We lead them there. God takes care of the rest, right? But we don't do any good if we don't get them here. We don't do any good if we don't introduce them to Christ. So don't think in these scriptures when people tell you, you shouldn't be hanging around that person. Where did Jesus go? He went to prostitutes. He went to tax collectors. He went to sinners everywhere. And he got in the middle of them and started witnessing to them. That's what you're called to do. Get out in the world comes down to this more than anything else. Once you accept Christ, you become yoked. You're yoked to the one and only. Man, if you're there, that's where you need to bring everyone else. So stay yoked in God's word and his, his instruction on holy living. Be the reflection of, I'm not telling you to go out there and sit with your friends and preach to them. Don't try to drag them to church. Don't go in there and say, man, you need to be in church. You need to, you need to do this. You need to do that. That's not going to do any good at all. But when they can see what God's doing with your life and what God's doing with you, the worst person in the world can see that reflection. God can change it. And he can, they can see it through you. We've said before, you may be the only Bible that they ever opened. And that's what we're called to do. So if someone's telling you that you're hanging around some people you shouldn't be hanging around with, the only problem you have there is if they're dragging you their direction, you're the stronger one. God made you stronger and he made you bigger. If you're yoked to them, then they better come on. You're going to pull them. 
or it's going to get very uncomfortable. Amen? And if you feel today that you're yoked to something or someone that's pulling you in a different direction, then you need to go to God. Say, Lord, I need the strength, the words, and the wisdom to lead them the other direction. You can't do it on your own. None of us can. You can't just do it on your own. You have to have God right there with you. And that's why it's a great thing to be yoked to God. Because He's going to help you, as He helped us the other night, achieve some really good things. It's when they come to know the Lord, the yoke becomes equal. And both of you start pulling in the same direction. In your household, in your marriage, in your business, and in your life. If you're yoked to something that makes you very uncomfortable, I would say continue to stay the course. Reflect God's image, Jesus' light to everyone. It's not going to be on your time. But I will tell you this, when someone comes to you and asks you to do something that is totally against God's word, don't bow down. Stand the ground. If you get fired over it, God will bless you with something better. If you stand the ground for God in anything, if you stand the ground in your marriage, if you stand the ground with your friends, God's the one that's going to take care of that. When you seem like you're getting weak, God's just making you strong. So don't let people pull you that direction. Many people say, well, I can't do that. You know, I have an issue. I've known them for a long time. I've been at this job for a long, long time. You know, I, I just can't do that. We're afraid. And it's easy to become afraid of things because you get comfortable where you're at. But once you come to know the Lord, He's going to make it uncomfortable. He's going to pull you out of your comfort zone and say, here we go. Look at me. I'm a perfect example. I've been pulled out of my comfort zone a lot. Many of you have. You have to say and do things that you don't want to say or do. But once again, if you can back it up with Scripture, then say it. Put it out there. It will make you a much better person. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings you continue to provide. Father, and the favor you show right here on your church house. Father, we are so thankful. We're thankful for the moms and the daughters that all showed up last night. We're thankful for the men that found in their hearts to serve, not just serve the women, but Lord, to serve you. So Father, we thank you for all that. We thank you for the good works going on here. We're excited about what they're, uh, what's about to happen. Because, Lord, you know what that is. Today, I pray that anyone that feels like they're yoked and being pulled the wrong direction, Father God, that you would give them the strength, that you would give them the words and the wisdom, Father, of how to equally get themselves yoked with these folks. Give them the words to bring that unbeliever to know you. Father, we know you're not trying to change us. You want to change our heart. And Father, allow us the opportunity to do that with others. Let us get outside the walls of this building. Because that's all it is. These people are the church. So let us get outside these walls. Let us reach out to those unbelievers in the world that they would come to know you. Father, we're just so thankful. We pray today that everything we said and did here, everything to do with the band, the music, myself and all the servants and all the people here, we pray that it was pleasing, uplifting and glorifying to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.